on. According to Detective Gersey's report, hardly any evidence was collected. 
Well, I don't know him. I spoke to him on the phone. Now, he said the heat was so intense, everything melted down. This detective that you recommended, uh, Thaddeus McDahey, I hear he tends to be rather, um, unorthodox. But Mr. Pinkrow said he wanted the best man available. Someone with police background. You know, perhaps I should give Daggy a call and uh, tell him you arrived a day early. Splendid. I'm sure he's as anxious as I am to get started. I'm curious, Miss Winters. Did you volunteer for this case? It's more of a convenience, really. I had another case involving a French surgeon here. There is another reason. I recently had a divorce, and I thought a change of scenery might be rather uh, nice. Mm. Well, I hope it resolves quickly. Day he promised to take me trout fishing in California. Other than his propensity to gamble, are there any other aberrations Mr. McDay he might have? By the time you leave here, you'll either love Dehi or you'll hate him. And you can count on that. <laughs> Have you seen my big fish? Oh, <laughs> oh yes. Wait here. I'll be right back. Excuse me. Sir, I'm looking for a Thaddeus McDahey. I'm Jill Winters from the Limebrook Limited Insurance Company. Run on board. Uh, excuse me, Maggie Thatcher's here from the insurance company. Come on in. Nice to meet you. We had a little party. I don't know what Mr. Pinkrose was thinking when he hired oh. this jerk. <laughs> Hold on just a minute. This is outrageous. I told the cabbie to wait. <coughs> Welcome to New Orleans, darling. Pay a cabbie here, he's gone with the wind. I didn't pay him. That's all right. I'll go get a bear and we'll bring the car around. Whoa! Welcome to the Big Easy. Perfect. I love this town. Great. What's the hurry, Brett? Guys, hadn't you ever been in rain before? Woo! New Orleans rain. Yeah. I can 
cannot believe they haven't called us back. Why do we have to depend on the sleazy guys in Chicago? There's no way I can move these things on my own. I need them, they need me. Besides, it's worth cutting them in if it means we get to walk away free. Hello. No. What? What? What's wrong, DeMario? Look, if it's too much for you guys in Chicago, maybe I should call New York. Yeah, okay, all right. That's better. I'll expect your guy next week. Yeah, bye. Oh, perfect. <laughs> mm. I paid my dues the hard way, Franco. In blood. <laughs> Must we drive in this heap? Well, it's Saturday night. We need another hour before a cab showed up. Besides, I don't have any wheels. You're a private detective and you don't own a motor vehicle. Well, <laughs> sort of got repossessed. <laughs> I don't believe this. you do that? What else can you do with tequila? <laughs> Mr. McDaghy, I am terribly sorry, but I am used to working with sober professional people. I'll arrange to have you replaced in the morning. No can do, baby. That pompous bastard you work for faxed me a contract. <laughs> pompous? Mr. Pinkrose is one of our top executives. Whatever. Half a world away from home, no friends, no relatives. Teamed up with a drunken Irish American. What next? Flat tire. Well, at least it stopped raining. Hey, what do you think my chances are? Excellent. She can't keep her hands off. <laughs> yes, Jill Winters checking in. Yes, Miss Winters. I'll require a bellboy. Sorry, miss. They're all occupied. I'll get your bags. You must be beat, Miss Winters. Mind if I call you Jill? Yes. I do mind. And no, I'm not tired. I'm still on London time. I need a drink. Hey, I'll join you. Like hell you will. <laughs> Call it intuition or what, but I've got this feeling you and I are really going to hit it off. You get the same vibes? You collect me a 10 a.m. shop in a decent vehicle. Way to go, Dee. <laughs> Maybe she's not quite ready yet. Yes, I'd like to make a call to London. This one is from New Orleans on line one. Put us through. Mr. Pinkrose, he is so ill-mannered. He's like something that crawled out from under a rock in Belfast. We can't sack him. The contract is binding. Besides, we're facing a more serious problem. Proof of ownership requires confirmation by two certified gemologists. But, sir, we complied. Mr. Gabosi is Cartier's chief gemologist. He and Mr. Lyman both worked up the diamonds. I'm well aware of that, Miss Winters. But Gabosi had a stroke. He's in a coma and is not expected to live. Oh, my God. 
That means if we recover the diamonds, we can't claim them. Robert? Yes, sir. Book me a flight to New Orleans. I'm afraid our Miss Winters may need some help. Well, Romeo, did you enhance your sex life last night? Screw you, babe. <laughs> She's too classy for you, baby. It'll snow in hell before you get in that chick's pants. Hundred bucks says I'll have her before she leaves town. Oh, yeah? You're on, pal. <laughs> I feel like hammered dog shit, man. You look like it too, baby. <laughs> Bonjour, mon cher. Tehi. My God, the man is gorgeous. We're going to the boondocks. Shouldn't you wear something more casual? I'll survive. Thank you for the flowers, by the way. That was most thoughtful. I'm glad you liked them. I've always been a pushover for gifts. Police report confirmed traces of an inflammable agent were present. That took a real genius. I can still smell it. Let's check out what's behind us. Looks like something went down here. I think I'll check it out. Hmm. What is it? It's evidence. I'm coming down. I wouldn't do that in those hills. That gravel's mighty. Slick. Is that an old European custom? Showing your panties? Best get out of there. 
I'm quite comfortable, thank you. Suit yourself. The whole area's infested with snakes. We ain't screwed up any chances for Prince. Well, it didn't belong to the chauffeur. His name was Louis Pinshot. FD could be our suspect. Thought it crossed my mind. That's true. I'd say our killer smokes and has long black hair. Natural hair has scales. This is smooth. Maybe from a wig. Who knows? Maybe our suspect pees with the toilet seat down. Is that your way of implying that the perpetrator might be female? Please, Dahi, try to be a little more professional. Although I must admit, in an hour you've already gotten more than the police have. Or they admit to having. Yes. Well, I have something to tell you. Shall we have some coffee? Are you telling me if we find those diamonds in this jerk Bogosky? Gabosi. Whatever. If the guy croaks and we find the diamonds, it's not worth anything? Mr. Pinkrose is researching the matter. We'll discuss it when he gets here. You limey twit. The only reason a and I took this job was for the 15% finder's fee. Mr. Dahe, we offered to pay you by the hour. You opted for the contingency plan, and we didn't hire Herbert. Bullshit. a and I go back to Vietnam. We're a team. Whatever. I don't care if Herbert is meeting us there. We are not going bar hopping. We have work to do. Back off, lady. You think information will come to us by Pony Express? Leeds have found where the action is. Ballparks, bars, pool halls, strip joints, cat houses. Cat houses? You know. Boy meets girl, boy loves girl, boy pays girl. Boy visits clinic. What kind of people do you associate with? You name it. Professionals, lawyers, bums, derelicts. Stuffy, tight-ass broads from Great Britain. So, Spence, what's the deal with this John P. Show character? We can't find him anywhere. Bus crashed last week. Killed outright. So much for John Pinshot. Now what? Do you like Mexican food? We have a special tonight. Oh, no. Not for me. I have a sensitive stomach. Hey, you're just punching from the time change. You need a drink. How about Tequila Rocks? I've never had tequila before. Is it any good? It's wonderful. Trust me, you love it. What's it made from? Cactus. It's good for you, actually. Make it tequila shooters. Great choice. Down the wrong pipe. Better try another one, Spence. Set us up again. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Vietnam, and um, the nurse. The nurse? Oh, uh, nurse Nancy with a tattoo. <laughs> okay, but I'll catch you later. <laughs> oh, I broke my hand. 
Six years of Six boring. Six years of boredom. <laughs> right. How dare you get romantic with me? God. Oh, shit. Women. Oh. oh. Wow. You're a heavy drunk. Solid ten. Mm -hmm. Tush, ten plus. Day he. Boudreaux sent me. You gotta speak up, my hearing's bad. Name's Day he. Boudreaux sent me. Recognize this guy? Yeah. Yeah, I did some time with him in the joint. Are you positive it's him? Yeah. Why didn't you tell the arresting officer? I don't trust cops. I'm gonna tell my PO officer when he gets here. He gotta help me out there. I need something. You help me and I help you, okay? Sergeant Gersey will be with you shortly. Thank you. Hello. You slime, how dare you? 
I hope you used a condom. <laughs> I don't use them. I'm allergic to rubber products. <laughs> Incidentally, your performance is highly commendable. It was though you hadn't been laid in years. Someday I am going to kill you. You are a rotten lo- oh. Calm down. Easy. Easy. That's better. Now then. Ortiz saw two guys barbecue Lyman and Pichot. And not only that, he knows one of the suspects. Franco Dumas, as an FD. Are you going to tell Sergeant Gersey? Found out he's on the juice. What? Yeah, he's a crooked cop. But I'm gonna check him out anyway. Well, did you talk to Trini? No, he's up to his hips in some extortion case. If I find out I'm pregnant, Come on now, you aren't pregnant. Excuse me? Right, you are. But in the unlikely event that you are... So, do you like to name Jefferson Davis for a boy? Uh. <laughs> <sighs> You want to be? I'm busy. I'm here about the Lyman affair. Yeah, well, we didn't discover the crime scene until two days after Lyman disappeared. Make matters even worse, because of the severe rains, it became very difficult to collect any evidence. What about witnesses at the airport? There weren't any witnesses. Christ, what about the kidnapping of the chauffeur? Hey, look, hey, he, if you got any pertinent information, quit tap dancing with me. Spill it. Do you even give a damn, Gersey? Like I said, I'm busy. Be seated, Mr. Ortiz. Could you please speak up? My hair is not so good. Thank you, sister. An insurance company contacted the church regarding a substantial reward. Well, hello, sister. <laughs> Tina, you tender thing. Bring us a couple bowls of menudo and some cerveza. My friend here has the Irish flu. What is menudo? A uh, Mexican or Cajun penicillin. I mean, what's in it? Meat, rice, what? It's kind of a fish. You know, Jews rely on matzo ball soup, and Mexicans and Cajuns rely on menudo. I'm not wild about seafood. Well, it doesn't taste fishy. Priest puts it through some kind of ritual or something. What ritual? Well, he blesses it, sprinkles salt on it, waves his weenie over it. Hell, woman, it's too deep for me to understand. Directions on an aspirin bottle are probably too hard for you to understand. Well, that may be true, but it'll cure your hangover. You can make a book on that. Make book? Right, I heard about your penchant for gambling. I'd better check on Trini and see if he can spring or tea so we can get a deposition. Well, maybe if you showed some spirit of cooperation with Sergeant Gersey, he might become our ally. Well, I have a gut feeling that if Gersey knew that Ortiz saw Lyman and Pincho get fried, he'd be screwed. Good, huh? They're offering for information regarding the diamond messenger who was did you do to that poor man? I have to leave. What for, Sister Giselle? Hmm? Forget my face, or I will rip your balls off and feed them to my dog. Well, 
Last night when you couldn't keep your mouth shut, I got the distinct impression your bed's been in dry dock a mighty long spell. My sex life is not your concern. Show a little compassion, Dehi. With all those bloody drinks last night and the time change, it's all been terribly humiliating. Hey, man. Ortiz just bought the farm. Thank you for the menudo, Tina. It did wonders, and it was quite tasty, too. Never touched the stuff myself. Beans, it's made with cow intestines. The original? Yeah, that's the original. Who was he visiting? Some dope addict friend of his. The guy got released from prison a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> In the past that Shelby has, is there an example of Giselle's writing? Of course. Well, <laughs> that's it then. Hey, look, Bechtel. We've been over this before. I got the brass right my ass real hard over the Lyman affair. I'll do it, darling. Of course you will. <laughs> Get out of here. Close the door on your way out. I want you to find Shelby and get that jail pass. If he gives you any trouble, you know what to do. What about Morier? I heard he was on vacation for two weeks. Maybe he should take a permanent vacation. You're a naughty, naughty girl. Yeah. Where that homicide occurred. Right there. No witnesses on visiting day? This place must have been full of people. Who was on duty? There was a new man on duty. Hell, the guy must have issued 40 passes in that hour alone. Well, Detective Gersey, was there someone at this cubicle? I mean, that person must have seen the suspect. Well, ma'am, I'm afraid in all the confusion that the paperwork was lost. Fuck it. Let's get out of here. Shelby, born March 9th, 1953. <laughs> this guy's a real clown. He, uh, he goes around with this big neck brace on. Claims he got hurt in some department store accident. 
Which one? Which one what? In which store? Oh, uh, let me see. Uh, newbies in uh, Metairie. Newbies? Did Mr. Shelby say which ankle the tattoo was on? Excuse, do I know you? <laughs> it's all right. Uh, sh left. Left. I wish I could tell you kids more, but when Gersey got to the scene, he kicked everybody else out. So what is Gersey's story? It's connected. Look, cowboy, uh, there's an unwritten law, you know? I mean, if you can't see anything good about a fellow officer, you don't see anything at all. Ah, oh, come on, Moyer. We go back years. That rule doesn't apply to us. I got no proof. But? But, Jersey's changed. I mean, he used to be a straight shooter, but now he's got new clothes, pocket full of money, new car, new friends. But not the type you bring home to mom, if you get my drift. Thanks, pal. We'll need to talk to you again. Uh, you better make it soon. I'm going on vacation. Oh, hey. You didn't hear nothing from me. Mom's a word. <coughs> Where's the jail pass? <coughs> Where's the fucking jail pass? I what? I flushed it down the crapper. If that jail pass ever shows up, it's going to be your death warrant. You got it. I swear to God, Mr. I flushed it down the crap. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> hey, where's the phone around here? Yeah, like a bad case of herpes. What do you want, day? Another fucking loan? Talk about a low blow. You forgot about the time I saved your ass in that bank shootout on Vermont. Yeah, well, I shot the bastard first. <laughs> in the foot, lard ass. I'm the guy who blew the asshole's brains out. Some of us work, day. Get to the point. Does the name Leon Shelby mean anything to you? Yeah, sure the hell does. Really? How much money? I'm sorry, am I interrupting something here? Shelby's got some attorney to file a bullshit lawsuit against Newby's department store. So? So, newbie's attorneys have put up ten grand to find him dirty. And how does this concern us? Well, Shelby's claiming he's so disabled that he can barely walk. So we need a twist. So all we have to do is get him on video. Like what? I don't know, running, jumping, flying, screwing a goat, whatever. Once we get him, then he'll testify against the nun who I store tease. In return for the video? Exactly. Have you no ethics? Well, it's the American way. You hit him in the pocketbook. Do all private detectives in America conduct themselves in this manner? No, but the ones that don't end up selling vacuum cleaners do. I see. So, when I played patty cake on your butt, did that rub your engine out? Certainly not. I'll bet. So I lied. Hey, brother. You know you're gonna hate me for 
for standing you up like this, but Sheila's pissed about me going fishing instead of being with her and the kids. Can't do it, man. She said it's either you or her. And since you ain't such a good leg, <laughs> my old lady wins again. See you at work next Asshole. week. You'll know me. I'll be the one in the pussy too. Alarmed, Officer Murray. You must know me. I'm a true friend of the men on your force, the finest in the city. Yeah, I know who you are. You Joe Bumfuck. Huh? Big fancy boats, big fancy cars. <laughs> you do anything to put a good cop on the take. I don't take shit from shit eaters. You get only one chance, officer. It will be your first and your last chance. Actually, it's an honor to be part of our group. You see, some of New Orleans' finest are among our team players. Oh, believe me when I say, it will change your life. <laughs> or should I say, <laughs> without us, you won't have a life. <laughs> go with you if you were the last person on the planet. Nobody buys me. Wait a minute. Listen to me. You are the nobody. I understand you've been talking to internal affairs about a colleague of mine, Detective Gussie. Yeah. Riding on a fellow cop. It's betrayal. One day, you will need backup. No one will show up. Are you man enough to handle yourself on the streets alone? Yeah, well, I'm man enough to take care of this piece of shit. Mr. McDahey, this is Dr. Defoe. Howdy, Doc. Pleasure meeting you. Boudreaux, Carl. I'm out of here. Oh, we've concluded our business. Yes, uh, my wife's expecting me. Pleasure. You wearing that? No telling where we might end up. Please, Dahey, it's only a stakeout. What? There's his car. Place hides in the dumpster. Can you drive? Good, you can take the car back. No way, mister. I've been instructed not to let you out of my sight.
covers. Lovely. They're copulating in public. A lot of that going around these days. Filthy swine. I hate to waste good food. You're a pig. Your mother raised you in a trough. I just brought this from the boat. You made me ill for nothing. Sometimes I have trouble reading you, Jill. Like now. Are you hitting on me? Safe sex is alive and well in New Orleans. <laughs> Blessed miracle. The mind is healed. <laughs> well, something else. You just blew Shelby's case right out of the water. <laughs> to Britain. Long live the king. It's Queen Dehi, but in your case, it's a thought. You'd better leave. You're making a terrible mistake. Nonsense, besides, it's late. Hmm. You'll come around, Brett. It's just a matter of time. Don't hold your breath. Slav, he's ill-mannered, and he's crude. Forget him, Winters. Oh, who the bloody hell am I kidding? Hey, you gonna love 
crawfish shit, man. I get the recipe from an old uh, cat down at the French Quarter. Just gonna leave with here. Here. What the hell's that? Oh, wrong piece. What's this? That's good. No? Yeah. By the way, Boudreaux said that uh, Franco was from uh, Miami. Well, that explains why no one around here has heard of him. Shit needs salt. It's right in front of you. Is your arm broke? So that's all you got for 40 bucks? No, he said he's also tight with some crooked cop. You got a name? Boudreaux's checking it out. I got a feeling I know who it is. Yeah. You're right, this shit does need salt. Oh, shut up, you dumb bitch. Maple Leaf at 10 o'clock and don't forget the gel pass. Listen, Shelby, you'll get the original tape if you cooperate. Otherwise, it goes to Newbie's lawyers. Hey, smartass, just who the hell do you think you are? Listen, you little weasel, if you don't play ball, you can kiss your bullshit lawsuit goodbye. Wait. Damn. So, what do you have for me? Tells me the guy's name is Dave. Dave. That's right, D E G H Y. Dave. And to make matters worse, he's working with a federal agent. Now look, I'm gonna get an address. I'm doing the best I can. But it ain't good enough, is it? Hmm? Listen, thanks to you, Shelby and that jail pass both disappear. You are bought and paid for, girls. You slimy parasite. Why don't you shut up? Look, yeah, I don't shut up. Hey! Hey! There's nothing worse than a bad cop. What's with the choker, Shelby? You have relapse? I'll give you $2,000 for that video, and that's all I got. Don't mess with me, Shelby. You give me Sister Ice Pick, give me that gel pass, and I'll give you the tape. Well, she ain't a nun, because she's got a name tattooed on her ankle, Giselle. Which ankle? Right. I mean, left. All right, Bugger, now give us the bloody jail pass. Bugger? I know, Dahi. You're rubbing off on me. Hand it over, Shelby. Now, give me that tape. Fucking worm!
haven't had this much fun since the riots in Griffith Park in 87. Please, God, don't <laughs> let me die in this horrible place. I don't think I've done anything to deserve this. No! It was time I clubbed that gay Nazi biker at the Chili Cook-Off in Ball Heights. Did you think that I left my husband because he was this boring? Great. You're punishing me, aren't you, like God? Great! And you know what's great after something like this? Cold beer. And sex. You're sick. You belong in an institution. Well, sex is still good. Well, that lighter is a very common brand. It's probably a million of them this side of the Mississippi. That's fine. How about a tattooed lady? Which is uh, Gazelle Dumont. Now, she was born in uh, Louisiana. She lived in the French Quarter for 10 years. She served 10 months in the slammer for a felony assault. They released her in May. That sounds like the one. Is she still on the streets? Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, according to a parole paper application, she's got a job lined up with a local businessman by the name of Joseph Bechtel. Great, Trini, for a guy who doesn't party your eye by me. Thanks a lot, bud. Gotta leave. Fantastic. You have an address? I do. We could pay Mr. Bechtel a visit, but first... Not so fast, Davey. Look. I find you most attractive. But it won't work. Why? Our lifestyles, our values, they're just aren't compatible. And then there's your gambling problem. Hell, woman, gambling's no different from playing the stock market. Really? What about your little escapade in Vietnam with Nurse Nancy? Nurse Nancy? Yeah. Gentlemen don't place wages that involve the seduction of women. Oh, for Christ's sakes, woman, it happened in a war zone. People in combat get a little wacko. Okay. See, Jim was a diehard Republican. He thought Nixon walked on water. Well, I felt Nixon was an asshole. So he put up a case of scotch, and I was broke at the time. You're always broke. That's true. Anyway, when I got back from patrol, he was in the shower with Nurse Nancy. So what's the big deal? Aren't you forgetting something? The political slogan you agreed to have tattooed on your bum? Well, did you or didn't you? You know, it's been so many years I can't remember. Don't be a smart ass. Did you get the tattoo or not? Look, I'm easy. Find out for yourself. No. I'll take it. Pay the lady. I'm Canadian, so I'll need a receipt for customs. What a horrible person. I couldn't see any tattoo, but that has to be Giselle Demont. Probably right. She wasn't the least bit interested in selling anything. I'd say the store's the front. 
Well, their entire inventory consists of costume jewelry and tourist junk, yet they have a D&G box. Run that by me again? You're kidding. Danzig and Glickman? The best safe money can buy, they're all but impossible to breach. My experience is robbery homicide. I know little about safes. It shows. I know those stones are in that safe. I can feel it. You willing to give odds on that? You and your gambling. By the way, Sport, the $75 you spent on that ring all but exhausted my expense account. Do you know why I bought that ring? Of course, you wanted a sample of a handwriting to compare against the jail pass. I never worked robbery homicide, but I'm not stupid. Well, you're not a brain surgeon either. that jail pass, Shelby. Otherwise, this will be your permanent home. So I swear to God, I flushed it down the toilet. Honest. Do you believe this guy? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Okay, I gave it to Dehi. You know your problem? You've got an active imagination. Oh, come on, Dehi. You know it's the store's policy never to divulge any details of his customers' purchases. Damn it, Billy. All I want to know is if Bechtel bought more than one safe. That should be worth, let's say, 40 bucks. Oh, jeez, Dave. 40 bucks. Thanks a lot. For 40 bucks, I could get fired if my boss finds out. Change in plans, wimp. Not only are you going to help us, but you'll do it for a mere $20. I wouldn't mess with the lady, Billy boy. I've seen her when she drinks. She gets bloody fucking mean. Did I say bloody? Now, you're certain Mr. Bechtel didn't purchase another safe? Yeah. Your plan is idiotic. We're not even certain the diamonds are in the blasted safe. Besides, it would be tantamount to stealing. No, they're already stolen. We'd be, like, rescuing them. No way. Besides, it could cost me my career, let alone get me arrested. Relax. I've got it covered. But I am going to need your help, Bear. I don't know, man. I'm working on a fish finder. You find somebody else. Well, your cover's simple. All you have to do is say the property owner hired you to service the plants. But I don't know who the owner is. Suppose somebody asked me his name. Well, his name's Robert Mondavi. Robert Mondavi? You sure? Mm-hmm. Sounds good. How the hell should I know what the owner's name is? Excuse me. Hey, hey! Uh, I'm filling in for the regular gardener. He's sick. Got the plants back there? Go ahead! T. Bo? Oui? Day he. Called about the man that bought the wig and the mustache. Ah, oui, oui. He bought this type of wig. Marie saw him. Oui? Marie? Oui. Do, 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 do. What am I doing here? Day, you son of a bitch. You look like junior samples and drag. Get back to me. All right. Now, we can just 
get out of here. Ooh, ooh. Before that bitch jams me through the fucking brain with an ice pick. You know anything about the man that bought the wig and the mustache? Il est ouvert en dents tout en Ah, merci, merci. What? We had a gold tooth. You know, Franco, I'm getting tired of Gersey. He's lost a lot of his influence. I hate the fucking weasel too, boss, but isn't it important to us that he carries a badge? You're missing the point, pusshead. None of the other cops trust him. They all clam up when the son of a bitch is around. Well, I guess we might have to arrange a little accident. What do you think, darling? She's insatiable. Mm You 20 right, 31 left. Predictable, just like Man, I'm drawing a camel's ass in the Sahara. <laughs> mm. Mr. Pink Rose, this is Mr. Day. Howdy. My God. Where did you find these? In a room under plant. <sighs> Hurry up and check them out, Pinky. Those cool little suckers are worth 1.2 mil to me. The name is Pink Rose. Whatever. Clock back tell. You know where your diamonds are? <laughs> Who is it? Well, I do, asshole. Well, my lottery numbers are 7, 20, 31. Who is this? <sighs> Calm down. Don't be so emotional. It's not like you owned them in the first place. <laughs> Look, just fuck off. <sighs> Poor.
poor bastard loses a fortune in diamonds, he can't even report them to the police. <laughs> So what's a good word, Pinky? It's pink rose. Whatever. These appear to be the diamonds. Pity your efforts were in vain. What the hell are you talking about? Hasn't he been informed? I'm sorry, Dehi. I meant to tell you. Mr. Gabosi died. It's highly unlikely we'll be able to claim the gems. What? You pompous-ass British bastard. I busted my boss buying those diamonds for nothing? That's enough. Shit! I'll kill him. I'll kill the son of a bitch. Look, possession's nine-tenths of the law. So if we have the diamonds, why can't I fly to L.A. and just give them to the owner? Listen, Dehi. British law is very complicated in international matters. As British subjects, Mr. Pinkrose and I aren't permitted to... Forget it. In simple terms, Mr. Day, we are unable to prove legal ownership. Therefore, British law prohibits us. Screw British law! Can't you get it through your fat head? If you're caught with the diamonds, you'll be incarcerated. Well, I must push off. I'm terribly sorry, sir. This whole thing has been a nightmare. I'll be at my hotel. That man is dangerous. You owe Mr. Pinkrose an apology. Fine. What if Bechtel cops out he stole the diamonds? Then it proves he doesn't own them, right? You're wasting my time. Well, if the cops found the diamonds on me, they couldn't bust me. Your mind is warped. They would still confiscate them. But if no legal owner is determined, then there is no victim. And without a victim, there is no crime. Meaning you couldn't be prosecuted. Precisely. Therefore, I have nothing to lose. Think about it. You'll come around, Brett. Hey, Bear and I are going fishing. Now, would you take good care of that present I sent you? But I do expect a favor in return. I still hate you. I'll call you when we get back. Don't lie to me. And deceive the woman I'm practically engaged to? Never. Just relax. Maybe I'll catch you a big menudo. You're up to something, aren't you? Gotta go, Britt. Ciao. Don't hang up on me, Dehi. Georgia. What? This little item proves your girl killed Ortiz. Bullshit, it does. I don't think I like you. You want to fess up before I blow your fucking head uh -huh. off? 
Okay. We stole them. We stole the diamonds. Okay, all right already? Put the fucking gun down. All right, what do you want? Come on, all right. Shut up. Anything else you want to ask this asshole? Shoot him. Come on. Shoot come him. Come on. <laughs> Say goodnight, Big Tail. Hey, come on. Come. Don't be fucking crazy. Misfire. Try again. There's gonna get throw. out of here. Come on. Good night, Big Tail. No. <laughs> See ya, Joe. Ah. You bastards! <laughs> See you again, Mr. Day. Remember? <laughs> if I could trouble you for the diamonds and the jail pass. Hmm? Let him go. Excuse me? Let him down and I'll tell you. Oh, you're gonna tell me. There seems to be a little confusion as to who's in charge here. It's not you, Mr. Dahey! Is it me, or is it you? You're a bit of a sissy, aren't you? A Nancy boy. Hmm? <laughs> Got nice long hair, Mr. Dahey. It's prettier than my mother's. Where are those diamonds? Huh? Where are they? I mailed them to the FBI. <laughs> what? <laughs> mailed them to the FBI? Oh, you're a comedian. Hold it there, Dave. Hold it. We're in the basement and Herbert's tied upstairs. Relax, it's harmless. It's only a corn snake. Oh, they're poisonous. No, but they're hungry as hell. They bite like a mule. Hey, go kill it. Wait, I've got an idea. You got any string? What for? Just give me some. Do you have any string? Whatever. <laughs> Will this do? Dental floss? I don't like things in my teeth. Way to go, Brad. This is perfect. Hold me, Dickie. You're only trying to take advantage of the situation. I don't care about you, so don't touch me. Way to go, Dahi. Always attracted to the wrong women. Jeez. 
pushing 40 and I'm still a bachelor. It's not you, Joe. You're great. I'm just a screw up. He's on his way back. Bechtel, Gersey, and the girl. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine? They were hiring a flight, a charter flight, to Costa Rica. I mean, they were this close to giving us the slip. You've done a fine job. What Thank about you. charges? Oh, man, we got a slew of them. Murder one, a cop. Bribery. I mean, we got them on the diamond theft thing. The list is endless. But there is one small problem. They're stonewalling us on, uh, where the diamonds are hidden. Imagine that. Look, man. If you got the diamonds, you're dead meat. Now, I'm telling you. Franco and his boys, they're still out there on the loose. And besides me breathing down your neck, you're playing hardball with some goons, man. That if they think you got the rocks, they will kill you. Now, I'm telling you. These guys will take their mothers apart for $8 million. Hey, Trini, how far do we go back? Now, if I had $8 million in stones, would I be sitting here bullshitting with you? Really, Trini, your people have looked everywhere, and so have I for that matter. It'll ruin my career if I don't recover those stones. Hmm. Well, listen, I got a meeting with the chief. I got to go. 
Listen, why don't you guys wait here? I'll be back in about 10 minutes. They'll have some uh, information on those uh, bench warrants. All right, we'll talk about fishing, Trini. Hey, now we're talking. Yeah. Mr. Pinkrose will probably recall me to London to resume my duties. They can terminate me if I don't bring in the diamonds. Dehi, you know where they are. Well, if I did know where the diamonds were and turned them over to the authorities, they'd be tied up in litigation for 10 years. Then what would I get for my time and troubles? Maybe a few hundred bucks? But on the other hand, if I sold the diamond, imagine how much money I'd have. Then we could go fishing. I don't fish. Well, we could go to my cabin in Mammoth. I could do a little PI work on the side. A Bear could do the cooking. It'd be great. Well, I imagine they won't recall me immediately. And I, uh, I, I do have some, some holiday time available. If we were to go fishing, would you bait my hook? I really hate worms. <laughs> Postman came. It's from Herbert. It must be our fishing rod. Hell of a deal. Like I said before, I didn't have the diamonds. But thanks to good old U.S. Postal Service and A-Bear, <laughs> You are rotten. You know, I was just thinking, now that I'm rich, what would you do if I were to dump you? I would track you down in a manhunt. I would take the diamonds and your family jewel, including your royal scepter. I don't think so. They snatched him. Where is he? I don't know. You're lying! Are you okay? I could have died for these. I would never hurt you. I love you, Jill.
You know what would be really good right about now? A cold beer and, you know, sex. Mm-hmm. <laughs>